while I'm co-chairing uh, the Wednesday day three session on uh, the list of possible causes of childhood cancer, which are really quite diverse. The evidence is diverse, the causes are diverse, and of course it depends which particular cancer one is talking about. Uh, as you know, the charity is concerned with children and young people, known as children and young adults in the UK, uh, so not only children not to 15, uh, but also the age range 15 to 24. And um, most of the research into causes has uh, been carried out with childhood leukaemia. And the clear message from that uh, is that it's multi-causal, because the investigations that are being carried out um, cover aspects like uh, background radiation, which are probably responsible for about 20% of incidence of childhood leukaemia, and it really is unavoidable, unfortunately. Um, but the experience of radiation is very well known from the Japanese atomic bomb survivors uh, and from the experience of obstetric x-rays, which sadly double the risk of leukaemia in children. Uh, then we come to uh, what I think is the, uh, a major cause uh, these days, and that's air pollution, and that means from car exhausts. Now, I'm a little surprised that uh, this is not talked about rather more in the UK, because the number of stu studies in this area are really quite substantial. There's a classic problem with any of these epidemiological studies of childhood leukaemia or ch other childhood cancers, in that mercifully they're very rare, and therefore even national studies do not have the resolving power to uh, detect a, a link with an environmental factor. Um, but what we're seeing in recent years um, are the publication of major international pooled analyses and meta-analyses of international studies. Uh, and they are clearly showing uh, an association with the uh, uh, vehicle exhaust. Um, those studies haven't actually printed a, an estimate of what proportion of uh, uh, particular childhood cancers linked to air pollution. But this is something I've personally looked at in my own research. Uh, and my estimate, so this is my opinion, is that between 30 or 40 percent of incidents in the UK in urban areas is due to air pollution. It's a, it's a big one. Let's move further down the list. <clears throat> There's a very uh, interesting uh, um, uh, study in an international port analysis uh, by the Childhood Leukemia International Consortium, uh, published uh, last year uh, uh, in the International Journal of Cancer, uh, saying that there's a clear link between parental exposure to pesticides and the risk of leukemia in their offspring. And this is exposure of the mother uh, during pregnancy in the in utero period, and it's the exposure of the father in terms of... Uh, 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 preconceptual exposure. So they uh, are quite clear about the link. What we don't have from that study is any estimate of what proportion of uh, childhood leukaemia in the UK would be linked to pesticides. Uh, we don't have that, but we do have an acknowledged link. <clears throat> then we come to diet. Now, uh, tomorrow uh, morning, uh, uh, Professor Soteros uh, Kurtopoulos uh, from Greece is the spokesperson for the European-wide New Generous study, which included the UK, in which um, 1,151 uh, newborns, um, their cord blood was taken, so this is baby's blood, and analysis was made for DNA damage from specific and known uh, carcinogens in diet, such as nitrosamines used for preserving meats and PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which is from burnt barbecues and burnt toast and things. Um, you get PAHs in car exhaust as well, so that would be uh, so that's an inhalation pathway. Um, so okay, you can't unscramble the two, but we have these not just markers of saying yes, we're here in the fetus we have the DNA damage that they've caused. Of course, childhood uh, uh, cancer is mercifully rare, so we're all walking around with these insiders, but of course, 
all children are not going to contract uh, cancer, but the research is demonstrating explicitly the transplacental uh, transfer and damage to fetal blood from carcinogens in diet. Again, we don't have any sort of estimate as to what proportion uh, of uh, uh, childhood cancer would be linked to diet in the general population. But as a piece of mechanistic research, it's a very important piece of work and we look forward tomorrow to hearing about that. <coughs> uh, moving further down the list of uh, potential causes, um, we now know that um, uh, exposure to light at night, as in shift workers, increases the risk of breast cancer in female swift workers about, by about 50%. And that is classed as a uh, IARC, International Agency for Research on Cancer Classification, uh, uh, class 2A, which is probable carcinogen. Class 1 is definite carcinogen. <clears throat> um, and the cause there is that light at night suppresses the production of melatonin in the pineal gland, and melatonin is a very powerful natural antioxidant and anti-cancer agent, and in particular it's an anti-breast cancer agent uh, uh, by, uh, by cell surface markers. Um, yeah. um, <clears throat> the effect on the fetus hasn't really been looked at research-wise, so this is an emergent topic, but we do know that uh, maternal uh, melatonin crosses into the, uh, uh, into the fetus, transplacental transfer, and we do know that melatonin protects against oxidative damage in the fetus in animal experiments. This is extensive research. So we do suspect that the mother uh, exposed to light at night and night shift work will affect childhood cancer risk. It's not quantified, it's early research. We, we suspect that. Then we come to one which is always very, very contentious. Uh, magnetic fields and power lines. Um, because childhood leukemia is so rare, which I've mentioned earlier, um, it wasn't until, historically, in 2002, that we had the international pooled analyses, um, which did demonstrate a doubling of the risk of childhood leukemia with magnetic field exposures above 0.3 or 0.4 micro tesla. Now, levels of magnetic fields in the home, background levels, are something like uh, uh, 0 0.05 microtesla. So these average levels are above levels in the home. But if you live under a high voltage power line, and there are many houses built directly under lines and very close to lines, then fields can be several microtesla or even tens of microtesla. In addition, you are exposing your home to high fields from appliances that contain electric motors, like hair dryers. Um, I, I, we've seen some very unfortunate reporting saying that hair dryers cause childhood leukemia. Um, uh, of course, I never said that. I simply said that they are contributed, contributors to this average exposure. So um, that was accepted by IARC in 2002, uh, as an association, and they class this as a class 2b possible carcinogen. Now, since then, there's been enormous advances in understanding how magnetic fields interact with biological systems, as in bird animal navigation and so many other things. Uh, I won't bore you with those details now, uh, although we had a specialist workshop on that uh, at Children uh, with Cancer UK, and the details are on our conference website to report on that. But the bottom line here is that the World Health Organization estimates that 5% of childhood leukemia is caused by magnetic fields associated with the electricity supply. So that's the figure. It's not a large figure, uh, 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 but that's the figure. And so anyone, of course, exposed to high fields may, as a precaution, wish to try to reduce their exposure. So let's uh, now move on to teenage and young adults because we have a very interesting situation here that the incidence of those cancers is increasing quite rapidly. Um, and there have been various uh, theories as to why that is. One is early diagnosis, and certainly early diagnosis could feature in this, no doubt about that. But if it was a main driver, you would expect to see a dearth of cases in like the 30s and 40s, because they're being brought forward, 
and we're not. I mean, if I can mention two of the cancers we're talking about, we're talking about colon cancer uh, and we're talking about thyroid cancer. And both of those are also increasing at all ages, uh, not just teenage and young adults. And the other interesting feature is that the rate of increase is much higher in girls than in boys. Uh, and if it was early diagnosis, why would there be an acceleration in the diagnosis of boys versus girls? So we don't think uh, so important though early diagnosis is, because that's good news, early treatment, we don't think it's the main driver. Now, quite by coincidence, two weeks ago, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, issued a press release on their new report. So the full report's not published so we have an extended press release, where they linked a number of additional cancers, ones that all, they always have some, additional cancers linked to obesity. And there's two key ones they link to obesity, and this is colon cancer and thyroid cancer. So we do actually have a hypothesis. As to, it's only a hypothesis, uh, uh, but we do have a hypothesis as to what might be driving this increase. So in summary, we have a situation where in some cases, namely childhood leukaemia, we do have quite a good handle on some environmental factors that affect risk. And in other areas, we don't have the quantitative data, but we do have hypotheses on the table, which we're working on. Mm -hmm.